finally from us this hour, we return to Ukraine, to Kiev, the capital city, which is known to the Ukrainians as Kyiv, and to the protests at Independence Square, which we've seen so much of through the course of this week. So many arresting images, so many compelling stories about the fight to gain a revolution, to make a difference in that country's future. We return now to the voice of a filmmaker we spoke to just yesterday, who ca who's been able to chronicle the images from Kyiv and from the people in Medan, and he's bringing us the story now of what he's seen in these last few days. There is a sense of it being a human army, uh, because everywhere you look, there's activity. There's just someone doing something, whether it's, it's carrying food, uh, working in the field hospital, carrying something for the barricade. There's movement going on. It's, it's not really organized by any particular leader or commander. Uh, it's just people taking the initiative and mobilizing themselves because they want to feel like they're doing something to support the cause. Uh, you know, an old lady who's just walking around with, with tea, and, and there's more food going around than, than people can almost eat, I would say, because so many women are, are just there and they want, they want to feel that they're supporting their guys who are on the front lines. So the mood on the square is uh, kind of this intense energy. It, it's a combination of, of uh, emotion, grief for the people who have died, uh, anger for that things have gotten to this point, uh, but also confidence. People have, don't seem to have any fear. Uh, there's a lot of people out there, uh, and they don't seem to have a fear of dying, actually. I mean, they say it's, it's victory or death, and they're not fighting for any particular politician, uh, but they're just fighting for the future of their country, what they believe is freedom. Previous to yesterday, I think there were about six deaths, uh, but yesterday that number jumped to close to 100, so there were a lot of people, a lot of the demonstrators did get shot, even though they were carrying uh, shields and, and wearing bulletproof vests. Uh, the ammunition was so strong that it actually pierced through that. We had a field hospital in the lobby of uh, the Ukraine hotel, uh, right above the square, and there were medics there and doctors operating on people right there in the lobby. They had constructed a, a field hospital. Uh, I went there towards the end of the day, and it, they just happened to, at that time, be taking the bodies out of the field hospital. Uh, and they were actually taking them onto the square. Um, so when they were taking those bodies, the people sang the national anthem. The people were chanting, glory to the heroes, which is a common chant that you've been hearing on, on Maidan Square. Uh, and glory to Ukraine, Ukraine above all. Those, those kind of funerals, have been happening a lot in the past 24, 36 hours. I mean, these people are seen as heroes because they, they died and they, were, then they fought for, the, for many people who were not able to be there or who could not stand on the front lines. So uh, it was very emotional, actually, uh, for everyone. And you could see a lot of people crying. And, and it's really, these deaths have really kind of mobilized people to more radical kind of action, you know. A I don't think a political solution is possible. It seems like people are, are radicalized. You, instead of hearing chants of bandits out, you're hearing death to bandits. So it's having an effect of, of really people wanting, uh, not, not settling for any sort of compromise, but wanting to get rid of President Yanukovych uh, now, not a, a month or two or six months from now. The filmmaker Damian Kolodi he is an American and a Ukrainian, and he is reporting to us from Kyiv on what he's seeing there and what the people in his community want. We'll continue to follow the events in Ukraine, but that is it for us here on America Tonight.